Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I just wanted to take a few moments to thank my clients for allowing Debbie Thompson Photography to be a part of your life this past year. For weddings, portraits, events, travel photography, video production, and graphic design. Thank you so much for trusting me to capture your special moments and for allowing me to create products that met your needs. This past year has been one of exciting adventures. I visited 17 countries, five of them were new ones for me. A destination wedding in North Dakota, a Middle East trip to capture images for a local Sacramento company, and a personal photography project around Europe, just to name a few. I was trying to think of something personal to share with you, seeing as you've allowed me to be in so many of your personal and intimate moments this last year. And I thought, why not better than bring you here into my kitchen where you've never seen me before, because you know, I'm usually behind the camera or anywhere but in the kitchen. So I have on my perfect learner apron, because this isn't obviously where my expertise is. So welcome to my kitchen. I want to share with you an English traditional fruit cake. As you know, I'm from across the pond. And this means Christmas to me. It's also typical wedding cake in England as well, like Prince William and Kate. That's, this was their wedding cake. Let's get started with making our traditional English fruit cake. But before we can, I've enlisted the help of two strapping young Welsh guards that have just got off duty from Buckingham Palace and they're gonna help us make this. Good evening, gentlemen. So nice of you to fly so quickly across the Atlantic and come to Sacramento. You ready to make English fruit cake? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. This is Jack and this is William, Prince William. Yes. And they're gonna help make this. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm gonna read you the ingredients so you know what is in traditional English fruit cake. Two cups of flour, a pinch of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of allspice, one tablespoon of chocolate powder, two cups of sultanas, two cups of currants, two cups of chopped glazed cherries, half a pound of soft butter, one and a half cups of dark soft brown sugar, four medium eggs beaten, finely grated rind and juice of one lemon, finely grated rind of one orange, one tablespoon black treacle, and half a teaspoon of brandy flavor. So I saved some time and put the dry ingredients into one bowl already. And we are just going to now add the cherries and the currants and the sultanas, which over here are golden raisins. That's the closest thing that we can get. So Jack, if you would like to go ahead and put the cherries in that bowl. Wonderful, and I am going to take a spoon. Mommy? Yes? When's my job going to be here? Your job is right here. You can dump the currants in. Just dump them all in there. Perfect. Now I can, now I can do So this. currants and cherries are in, and then we're going to put in... I can do this. This? Yes, you can do this too. Oh, you'll have other things to do. Don't you worry. I get other things to do too. Yes. Okay, so here are, is our dry ingredients. And we're just going to quickly mix this up. This is... This is pretty much the only... This is the only fruit that goes in a traditional English fruit cake. It's not um, candied orange or lemon or any of those... Um, candied fruits that you see in little tubs in the store. It is just cherries and currants and the golden raisins. And that is it. Some recipes call for some nuts, but I don't put the nuts in. This is the closest you can get to Marks and Spencer's um, fruit cake. So if you're familiar with Marks and Spencer's, you're gonna know how amazing their fruit cakes are. In a separate bowl, we're putting our wet ingredients. So I went ahead and melted half a pound of butter and we have one and a half cups of dark brown sugar that's what gives this cake that beautiful rich dark brown color and four medium eggs we're going to put the butter into a separate bowl so 
So here's the butter. Jack, you can go ahead and put in the sugar, please. Mommy, yes. this is my job. Your job is coming right up. You want to say hi to everybody in the camera? Prince William. Okay, and we're just mixing the sugar and the butter together. Just like this. This is probably the longest part, just mixing everything. But it goes it goes quickly after that. Just getting the sugar and the butter thoroughly mixed together. Do you see this? Do you eat this when you're working at the palace? I eat it every day. Oh good. Did you have some of this for William and Kate's wedding? Did they share that with you guys? Down I outside? eat sugar every day. Do you? I eat sugar every single day, lunch, dinner, and breakfast. Really? And where on earth do you get that from? Store. Hmm? The store, huh? Okay. So we're going to put our four eggs in here. And the last egg. And we just mix this up. These eggs are organic eggs, which means these chickens live in paradise 24 seven. And we like to think of it that way, because the thought of chickens living in anything other than paradise just doesn't seem right. Because this cake is just so delicious. And, Almost done with that. And then we're going to just add a little bit of treacle and the brandy flavoring, which is, here's our molasses, and half a teaspoon of brandy essence. Mm -hmm. This gives this cake this authentic smell. And it's mm, it smells like mangoes. Well, not really. And then the other thing that we just need to quickly add to this is the rind from one lemon and one orange. And I went ahead and did that already, so you don't have to sit there watching us great lemons. But, and then the juice from one lemon. I'm going to use this so I don't get any seeds in there. Because these lemons in, in California are so big and juicy and they are full of seeds. And we don't want to be picking seeds out of our cake. There's so much juice in these things. They're probably the equivalent to 10 lemons somewhere else around the world other than Spain. Okay, that is all mixed in there now. So it's lots of liquid. We finished mixing the wet mixture and now what are we going to do, mister? Add this dry mixture to the wet mixture. Okay, let's do it. Jack said we're going to add the dry mixture to the wet mixture. So you can pick that up and start dumping in here, but be careful. I don't want it all over the counter, okay? Take a little bit of that. Okay, I'm going to mix this together. I can do it. I'm going to do this one just because it could get really messy. And go boom! That's right. And it would speed and get on the carpet and the camera. No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't want it on mommy's camera. No, we wouldn't. We should, if it gets on there, we should put it in the bath. The camera in the bath? Yeah, that's why he's not one of my assistants out in the field, okay? I don't know. Do there are some things that you have to understand before you can operate a camera. One of them is don't give your camera a bath. <laughs> we said earlier that we cover the cake with marzipan and royal icing. And this marzipan I found in England and it's best. It's firmer and it is made for fruit cakes. But I only have one box and I made three cakes this year. So this one I found on Amazon and it's made in the States and it's from scottscakes.com. It's softer, so use um, 
powdered sugar when you're rolling it out because it's kind of sticky but it will work it tastes pretty much the same so I was very happy to discover that that it's you can get that in the States anyway so that's our marzipan um, now let's show you how we're gonna get it in the tin okay. our wet ingredients are ready to go into the tin which is right here all ready to go just need one that has a, sp a uh, spring on the side take your parchment paper and you want double thickness on the bottom and on the sides so take it out double it over and then trace the bottom of your tin and just draw it around with a pencil and then cut it out then the same for the sides just pull out more parchment paper fold it over measure how much you need to go around and cut it and then trim it down so it's just a couple inches above the top of the tin so that's going to go in here the other thing that you want is because this cake bakes for like four hours you're going to want double thickness brown paper bags just chop the bottom off and lay it on your tray and that goes on top take another bag and cut it fold it over and that is going to go around the sides of the tin and what do you have for me jack here we go then you're going to get some string this is important because this is what protects the cake you're going to put this on here and this is going to hold the paper in place as it's in the oven just like this now here we go this is all there is to it we're just going to take this and scoop it out does oh there we go you want to pick up that cherry for me and put it inside there's a reason why I'm not in the kitchen because I make such a mess. <laughs> so our cake bakes for one hour at 300 degrees and then additional hours, three, four, four and a half, until it's done and you put a toothpick in it at 275 and that's it. And then you take it out, let it cool on a wire rack until it's thoroughly cool and then pop it out of its tin and put your apricot jam on it, marzipan and royal icing. So here's the final product with apricot jam, marzipan, and royal icing. And of course, it's not complete until you put some holly on the top. We're gonna enjoy our Christmas at our house. Thank you guys so much for coming all the way from Buckingham Palace to help me. Once again, thank you so much for allowing Demi Thompson Photography to be a part of your life this last year. And thank you for those referrals that you've sent my way. I have truly been honored to work with each one. Happy New Year.